Growing up, I'd heard stories about the American dream. Fanciful tales of a land where anyone, regardless of which social class they are born into, can achieve their own version of success. Whilst I accept that this is not always as effective in practice as it is on paper, and that some demographics still find it a lot harder to achieve the American dream, it is a far cry from the British class system, where individuals struggle to progress beyond the circumstances of their birth in the eyes of society at large. Since moving to America, I have found many opportunities for success, and I noticed that if I brought a can-do attitude and if I was willing to work hard, a lot of my friends and co-workers got behind me and were willing to cheer me on. This topic was suggested by Larry, a really great supporter of our channel. Thank you, Larry, for this great suggestion. Before the Industrial Revolution, your place in society was determined by which type of family you were born into. This influenced your lifestyle, your occupation, social status and your political influence. Since the advent of the Industrial Revolution, the system has been changing and evolving over time. British society has experienced significant change since the Second World War. More people were able to access higher education. There was a shift towards a service-dominated economy. The UK experienced mass immigration. Women's roles were changing and there was a more individualistic culture. So huge changes. However, claims that the UK has become a classless society have been met with scepticism. The British class system is broadly broken down into five main groups. 1. The lower class or underclass, which is a controversial term to describe the long-term unemployed and homeless. 2. The working class, consisting of two levels. Firstly, unskilled and semi-skilled workers, such as factory workers and labourers. And secondly, the skilled working class, those working in skilled industrial jobs or trades, traditionally in the construction and manufacturing industry. 3. The middle class, consisting of two levels. Firstly, the lower middle class such as office workers and those working in the service sector. These people would not typically have a university education. And secondly, the middle class, consisting of people who have a higher education and may have attended either state or private schools. 5. The upper class. Statistically, a very small percentage of the population and consists of those in possession of a hereditary title. For example, Lord, Lady, Duke, Duchess, Viscount and, of course, members of the royal family. Accent and use of language are other factors which help define a person's class. We should probably take the time to explain that in America, middle class means something very different to what it means in the UK. Middle class might be associated with your kind of average family. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? That's fair to say. Yeah. Whereas in the UK, it's kind of a, an, elevated. an elevated privileged mm -hmm. family. I feel like in America, middle class is just a term that you would use to describe yourself. In mm -hmm. the UK, being proud of your middle class status would be seen as very bad form. Hmm. Is that fair? Hmm. Mum. <laughs> which class do you fall under? Sometimes I find it difficult to figure out which class I actually fall into. <laughs> I don't think I don't think there is one. <laughs> In a class of our own. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> My dad came from a working class background and elevated himself to a skilled working class. My mum was from a middle class background. She attended private school and had a middle class profession. Back in my day, growing up in rural Norfolk, there was no expectation to go to university. Most people left school at 16 and went straight into a job. I attended college and did a two-year full-time business studies course. Most of the people on my course were from middle class backgrounds and they went on to university. So maybe I'm a lower middle class category. I think I often get put firmly in the middle class category. <laughs> well, I think Lucy, there are several things. <laughs> Very glamorous, you must be. So I went to a state school and then I was able to secure a place in a private drama school in London. I worked as a teacher and an actor in the UK, in Europe, in America, and I also worked in educational sales. If you include your accent, we've always known you are a class above the rest of us. The American dream is rooted in the Declaration of Independence, 
proclaiming that everyone is created equal with the right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. It makes no attempt to define the happiness or lifestyle, but does protect the right for everyone to have the same opportunity to pursue their personal vision of the American dream. It encourages an upward social mobility for families, achieved through hard work in a society with few barriers. The term American Dream was coined by James Truslow Adams in 1931, saying that life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone, with the opportunity for each according to ability or achievement, regardless of social class or circumstances of birth. The notion of the American Dream continues to be a theme across the nation and around the world. You will have heard that Lucy has had a positive experience of the American Dream. Me? Maybe not so much. I think there are certain things that factor into this. Age, lack of university degree, and maybe a little bit of a lack of determination. I think the college degree thing is very fair. I think so. I find that whatever job you're looking for, they want a college, you know, university degree. And consequently, I think more should be made of your actual work experience. You've got plenty of that, haven't you? I have got lots of that. <laughs> Furthermore, there is evidence to suggest that upward economic mobility has in fact declined in the US in recent years. Income inequality has risen in recent decades. Student loans weigh down Americans far more than their British counterparts. In the UK, you do not have to pay back your student loan until you reach a certain level in your salary. However, it is worth mentioning that since the pandemic, many Americans have not had to pay back their student loans. We're still waiting to hear when it will be started up again. Is the difference in the two systems more a case of economics or of attitude? Americans, in our opinion, have a really positive, optimistic attitude, believing anything is possible. We Brits, on the other hand, have a more realistic, or some may say, more cynical approach. So if you look here, this is a beautiful family. Here we have two children holding on to this, which gives it a real elegant feel. Here we have some kind of monster duck like this, with water trickling out of his mouth. And here, if you just come here and look, we have this amazing pool. Yeah. Really elegant, and uh, I love it. I'd love it in my garden. I really would. Now, if we just step back, then we can see the light flickering all around. Thank you. We have only skimmed the surface on this vast topic, but we hope it has given you some food for thought. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like, share, and subscribe to our channel.